Okay, so in this question we're going to be looking at a differential equation that corresponds to a population of grizzly bears. P is the number of bears, um, there are initially 10 bears, and the 0.736 on the right hand side corresponds to a hunting rate of bears. The 0.001 at the front of the term on the right hand side corresponds to the growth rate. Right, so to solve this differential equation, we're first of all going to pull out 0.001 as a factor from the right hand side. So when we do that we get dp by dt equals 0.001 times a quadratic in p squared. Now this differential equation is separable, so let's separate the variables and integrate. Um, we're going to leave uh, the minus a minus one sign on the right hand side simply so that the quadratic we get on the left hand side has a positive coefficient of the square term. Now let's look at this left hand side um, particularly the quadratic on the bottom of the fraction. Um, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and factorize this left hand side. If it can factorize then we can do the integration using partial fractions. If it can't we'd have to write the left hand side as a difference of a couple of squares and use a tan base substitution. Well, let's look at this quadratic. This quadratic, p squared minus 100p plus 736. Uh, well, that can be factorized into p minus 8 times p minus 92. So this means the integrand on the left hand side can be written as 1 over p minus 8 times p minus 92. And to integrate this particular fraction, we're going to use some f of partial fractions. So this means we can write um, we can write that integrand as a constant a over p minus 8 plus a constant b over p minus 92. Now because these are linear terms, the p minus 8 and p minus 92 are linear terms but are unrepeated, we can figure out the constants a and b by using the cover-up rule. So let's figure out the constant a. Well, a is um, the value that's over the term p minus 8. So the bottom of that fraction becomes 0 when p is equal to 8. So if we cover up the p minus 8 factor in our uh, in our fraction and then set p to be 8 in what's left, we get we see that a must be 1 over 8 minus 92. In other words, a must be minus 1 over 84. Similarly, to figure out what b is, we see that b is the term over p minus 92 and p minus 92 is 0 when p is 92 so let's cover up the factor of p minus 92 and that means that b has got to be 1 over p which is now taken to be 98 minus 8 92 minus 8 rather so that means that b has got to be 1 over 84 in other words our integrand um, sorry the integrals we've been trying to work out could be written as minus 1 over 84 times the integral of 1 over p minus 8 plus 1 over 84 times the integral of 1 over p minus 92 and that must be equal to minus the integral of 0.001 with respect to t. So each of these integrals are easy to work out. Those two on the left hand side are nothing more than natural logarithms of p minus 8 and p minus 92 respectively and the right hand side of course integrates to minus 0.001 times t. Now let's take this expression and multiply it through by 84 to give us minus log p minus 8 plus log of p minus 92 is equal to minus 0.084t plus a constant c. Now this constant c is different from that previous line um, because it's been multiplied by 84. However, a multiple of a constant is still a constant, so let's just leave that constant in terms of c. Now the left hand side is a difference of two logs, so let's use the laws of logarithms to write the left hand side as the natural logarithm of p minus 92 over p minus 8. And now let's take exponentials of both sides here. So that gives us p minus 92 divided by p minus 8 must be equal to the exponential of minus 0.084t plus c. Now by the laws of indices this right hand side is the same as the exponential of minus 0.084t times the exponential of c. But because c is a constant, the exponential of a constant is also constant. So let's call this constant an a. Now it's perfectly acceptable to write down um, immediately that when you take exponentials of the right hand side of the above line, you will get a constant a times e to the minus 0.084t. 
So let's take this expression now, rearrange it and try and make p the subject. To do this we multiply both sides by p minus 8, so that gives us that p minus 92 is a multiplied by p minus 8 times the exponential of minus 0.084t. Let's multiply the brackets on the right hand side and let's rearrange to get all the p's on the left hand side. And when we do that, we see that on the left hand side, the two terms there have p as a common factor. So let's pull out p as a common factor and then divide um, both sides by whatever multiplies p on the left hand side. So we see that p is 92 minus 8 times a times the exponential of minus 0.084t all over 1 minus a times the exponential of minus 0.084t. This is our general solution to our differential equation. Now what we want to do is to find a particular solution satisfying p of 0 is equal to 10. In other words, we start off with 10 grizzly bears. So we put t equals 0, we put p equals 10 into our general solution, and we solve to figure out what a is. So making those substitutions, we see that 10 has got to be 92 minus 8a all over 1 minus a. Um, multiplying both sides by 1 minus a, we see that 10 minus 10a has got to be 92 minus 8a. Rearranging this expression by adding 10a to both sides and taking 92 away from both sides, we see that a has got to be equal to minus 41. So let's substitute for a um, into our general solution to get our particular solution that p is equal to 92 plus 328 times the exponential of minus 0.084t all over 1 plus 41 times the exponential of minus 0.084t. So this is our particular solution. And what we're asked for in the question is to work out what happens to p as time in increases. Well, notice as t tends to infinity, the exponential of minus 0.084t goes to 0. And of course, this means that p must tend to 92 plus 0 all over 1 plus 0. In other words, p must tend to 92. So our population of grizzly bears tends to 92 as time develops.